name of the Lord. I said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are His children in the house of God. Praise the Lord. The Lord seemingly spoke in my spirit a while ago that Sodom and Gomorrah is crying out against Him. You judged us. It may not come today, and it may not come tomorrow. But I can guarantee you, God has stood up from the throne. Get ready. You say, don't be gloomy. I'm not worried about it because I'm a child of the king. But I'll tell you this, I'm concerned about those who are not. This country that you once loved, and which I still do, and once cherished, is no longer the same country. So we need this sermon right now that the Lord give me more than we've ever needed anything. Would you stand and reverence the word of the Lord? Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3. I want to preach to you on walking by faith, not by sight. Walking by faith and not by sight. Well, I've heard them kind of messages all my life. Well, you're going to hear one more. Because if you've ever needed to walk by faith, you need to do it now. Because if you want to go by what it looks like, you'd be a nervous wreck. If you want to go by what it looks like, you wouldn't allow God to bless you because you'd be too terrified. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3. And he, God, said unto me, talking about the dry bones, he said unto me, son of man, talking to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Father, I thank you again for this opportunity, for this ninth week of revival. If we've ever needed revival, I heard somebody say or saw somebody Say today, Father, on Facebook, other pastors, if we've ever needed revival, we need it now. If we've ever needed it in our individual churches, we need it now. That we can focus on the things that, God, we have to do in this last hour. And, Father, I pray that this sermon find the place in their minds and hearts as it did with me. God, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, stirring in me, Jesus. And I pray it stir in them that we must walk by faith. We cannot walk by what we see. And we give you the glory and the honor. And the church said, look at your neighbor say, walk by faith, not by sight. <clears throat> if we've ever walked by faith, we need to walk by faith now. Because we have to put our faith in God that He's going to take care of us. We have to put our faith in God now that He's going to bring redemption to us and keep us in His hand. But I'm going to tell you something else. We need to walk by faith because right now the Lord said, now is the time that we have a grave responsibility, and that's to walk up right and holy before the Lord and I'm just going to throw this in there. It's time to quit playing church. It's time to quit playing around. If you've ever got down to business with God, you need to do it now. If you've ever served God with all of your heart, do it now. If you've ever got junk out of your life, do it now. If you've ever got slack concerning the house of God, start doing it now. Get things prepared because I'm telling you we've got to walk by faith. After today, things are going to begin to get worse. As Jesus quoted, these things are the beginning of sorrows. And I'm not trying to be gloomy, but I'm here to tell you that we have got to get down to business with the Lord. Walk by faith. Church is not a playground. Church is not a place to come and say, I went Sunday and done my duty. Honey, let me tell you something. There's going to be a time that you're going to want to be in the house of God. There's going to be a time you'll run to the house of God. But I'm here to tell you there will be some folks that won't be here. We have to walk by faith. 
You know, one thing I want to send, I want to give you this, and, and it'll probably trip some of you out. <laughs> Faith is not believing. I knew you'd get quiet. I said, faith is not believing. Boy, some of you are going to run out of here and get on Facebook. Brother Jerry said faith wasn't believing. Well, let me tell you what faith is. It's knowing. Whew. Somebody ought to shout on that. You can believe anything. But there's a difference between believing and knowing. You see, I believe Jesus is coming, but I don't just believe it. I know it. I know what the Word said. I know judgment is coming. I just don't believe it. I have faith to believe that God is a God of His Word. And if He says that something is wrong, and I'll judge you for it, if He said, if you'll keep the condition, He said, I'll keep my covenant. But if you're not willing to keep the cut, the condition, I won't keep the covenant. But faith is not believing. It's knowing. Amen, amen, and amen. Too many times we walk by sight. Too many times we think, well, that's the way it is. Well, let me tell you something. That ain't the way it is. Hallelujah. I put on Facebook today that the Supreme Court ruling does not change the fact <laughs> that the Word of God is still true. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. How do I know that? Because I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. Hallelujah. I can tell you that faith, hallelujah, can change fact. But I know what I know what I know. If I walked by sight, I'd be a crazy person. Well, let me take it back. I'd be crazier because I knew somebody would pop off at me after church about it. You see, we want to go by what everything looks like. If you look at the world today, you would say that we're all doomed. But if you look at it through the eyes of faith, you would say, we're getting out of here. <laughs> If you look at it through the eyes of faith, you would say, God is about to intervene for you and I. Hallelujah. You see, everything is not what it looks like. If you walk by sight, then you're walking blind. What? I said if you walk by sight, you're walking blind. Why? Let me explain that. Because the things of this world will blind you and it will block your faith. Hallelujah. But I'm going to say it again. Faith is not believing. It's knowing. I know that God's going to take care of me. I know that if gas went to $10 a gallon, God would send me somewhere where I could afford it. Hallelujah. And if I could, he'd give me the money to do it. But I'm here to tell you that I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. Because if I went by what everything looks like, hmm. So you can't judge a book by its cover either. You ever, you ever uh, met anybody and you thought they was just, they got to be some, I don't know, they just look like they mean. Oh, come on. Look, you ain't going to have to see this mug for about three or four weeks. So at least get with me tonight. You know, I, I've met people, and, and, and us, us human beings, we're the world's worst about judging people by first impression. I've seen people with a frown. You know, i got a frown. See that little thing right there? All us trotters have got that. You look on, you, you, I'll, I'll get Brock and, and uh, Jonah and Judah and Justice to, to do that, and I'll take a picture, put it on Facebook, and you'll say, hey, they look just like Brother Jerry. I've seen people that look like that, and you thought, that's got to be a mean person. I don't want to have nothing to do with them. i got a pastor friend and his wife that we love dearly, and I won't say who they are because you all know them. But when we first met them, my wife said, I don't think I can be friends with her. I said, well, honey, what? She said, she, look at she's always frowning. I said, well, what does that don't mean nothing? Well, it... Well, it don't help none either. And after we got to know her, that's the sweetest thing you ever met. See, we always got to walk by sight, looking around. Oh, that's the way it's got to be. Honey, faith don't operate like that. 
Ooh, I'm going to say that again. Faith does not operate like that. Because that's just like laying up in the hospital bed looking at all them other sick people and said, well, I reckon I'm going to join them. I ain't going to get healed either. Well, let me tell you something. If I have to go in the hospital, I'm looking for the door. Anybody, nobody got that, but Randy, I said I'm looking for the door. What do you mean? I don't look to stay there, hallelujah, because I believe in healing, glory to God, and I'm not going to look at something and say, well, that's the way it is because that's the way it looks. You see, this, this walk has got to be knowing because if you don't know God is, because everything you see is contrary, write this down if you want to, everything you see is contrary to who God is. Whoo, man, that's good if I did said that. I said everything is contrary to who God is and what he is. That's why you have to walk by faith. Faith, and I want you to get this in your head where you tell pastor when you see him Sunday morning. Faith is not believing. Faith is knowing. Hallelujah. How do you know Jesus is alive? Because I feel him and I know he lives in me. Hallelujah. And I have seen him work. How do I know God heals? Because I have seen God do it. I am a walking miracle healed from a heart attack in this very church. My wife is a walking miracle healed from cancer. Hallelujah. I know I don't walk by sight. Because if I walked by sight, I'd be terrified. <laughs> now, let me give you an example. Come here, buddy. I love this guy. Most churches that I preached in wouldn't let him in the door. Serious. Because if you don't know Randy and you see him on that motorcycle, you're going to judge him. You can laugh if you want to, but it's the truth. Because you notice, have you ever noticed when you walk in a restaurant or somewhere you get that look? Especially when you pull up on that motor. See, that's wrong. Because you can't go by what he looks like. Because I know what he feels like. Shanda Bakuya. I felt my spirit bear witness the first day I laid eyes on him. How do you know? Because I walk by faith. I know that he's a man of God. I know, oh, hallelujah, that he loves the Lord. I don't have to go by what he looks like. I know, oh, hallelujah. So you see, we get caught up with vision. Sometimes I wouldn't, you know, I don't know how to say this. I don't usually have a loss for words, but I won't for long. Sometimes God needs to take our vision away for a period of time. Well, that's tough. Because we're always seeing the wrong stuff. You can get on Facebook and see anything you want to if you're looking. Ooh. When you're walking this walk with God, you can see anything you want to if you're looking. Sometimes this interferes with God answering prayer. Why? Because we don't see the way out. We don't see the end of the storm. All we see is the storm. But, honey, what faith is is knowing that there is an end, oh, hallelujah, to the storm, and knowing that if it is a storm right here, that somewhere the sun is shining, no matter what it's doing in Laverne, if it's raining here, somewhere in the world, the sun is still shining. Faith is knowing, knowing. If you go by sight, when you come to church on Sunday, you'd get discouraged. Sometimes if you look, if you're working on a job and you look at your paycheck too long, you get discouraged. I've been there, done that. But you know what I believe? I believe that we can look at a paycheck 
And we can change the numbers. Thank you, Sister Diane. Nobody got it. It's knowing that God's going to take care of you. It's not what it is. It's what it's going to be. Whoo, man, ain't that rich. That's like nanner pudding, ain't it? That was good. It ain't what it is. It's what it's going to be. Everything that says this is the way it is, honey, is a lie from hell because everything ain't what it appears to be. Everything that glitters ain't gold and everything that tells you that you can't make it, that's a lie because all you got to do is quit looking and start walking. Whoop, hallelujah. Quit looking and start walking because God ain't going to let you walk into the wall and God ain't going to let you fall. See, we only see the problem. Oh, God. Oh, God. You know, we spend entirely too much time whining. Oh, God, all I see, nobody knows the trouble I see. See, that's the point. You're looking at the trouble. Boy, I'm saying some stuff tonight that's just tickling me to death, and y'all just. I said, all we're looking at is the trouble. Honey, you got to learn to look past things. Glory to God. You got to learn to look over the hilltop. Glory to God. How do you know you got a mansion over the hilltop if you're always looking at the mountain? See, we're always looking. At what we want to see. You ever notice we use a phrase when we talk us Southerners? Of course, Yankees might do it too. I don't know. We always, <laughs> I forgot there's a Yankee in here, ain't it? Two of them, three of them. Glory to God, but I love them anyhow. Uh, we always got this little saying. We say, uh, y'all behave. Separate them. When you get the uh, this saying that we always say this, well, I see that. We say that all the time. Or we say, I can't see it. I guess I'm the only one who says that. I'm going to go outside. I don't know if I'm in the right church or not. I thought I was when they were singing, but something happened. And we, we got this thing to where we... You know, we just see everything the way we think it is. We look at storms, and we don't realize if we'll just look hard enough sometimes, we will see on the other end of it. But here's the point I want you to get. If you never see the end of it, Quit looking at it and just start walking. Just start walking. Because the thing about it is, when you start walking, faith starts acting. Whew. I said when you start walking, faith starts acting. Faith gets triggered. Woo! Faith gets motivated. The more you walk, the further your faith begins to grow. The more you, let me tell you, oh, Holy Ghost, just lay this on me. Woo, when you start walking, faith just jumps out ahead of you. Glory to God. And faith starts going and moving the mountain. Faith starts drying up the river so you can walk across on dry ground. You just got to quit looking and start walking. What if Moses had stood at the Red Sea? And said, well, I ain't crossing here. But what about Pharaoh? What about the desert? What about the mountains? Uh, we're kind of trapped here. What if when God told him to lift his rod, he just stood there and tried to analyze it? <laughs> See, one thing we do, we damage faith. 
hey, I'm going I'm to get with you tonight now. This is my, man, ain't nobody got to work tomorrow. And I, this is my last night. I can act the way I want to. Faith is damaged by trying to analyze it. See, when the storm comes, we're too busy trying to figure out where did that come from, why did it happen, what did I do wrong? Come on. And our faith is trying to reach out. Our faith is trying to crawl out, and we keep pushing him back down because we're always trying to dissect and figure everything out. But let me tell you something. Just walk. I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. Just walk. Because you keep walking, you're triggering your faith. <laughs> keep walking, your faith going to jump out ahead of you, and your faith's going to keep on walking, and it's just going to pull you right along with it. Hallelujah. And you'll see God do great things if you walk by faith. Quit looking at everything like you do. My goodness. we got to look at it. You know, I know when you go buy a car, you got you want to look at it, but my Lord, some people just drag it out. I've seen people that go to buy a car, and my goodness, they get there at 8 o'clock that morning, 8 o'clock that night, they're still looking at it. they under it, they over it, they in it. For goodness sakes, it's brand new. It's probably going to have a bug or two, but it ain't like you're buying a car that's 55 years old. Now I'm going to give you some simple country stuff. When your phone rings, what do you do? Why? You think somebody's on the other end because it's ringing? Nobody got it. You pick it up because you know You know, whether it's family, friends, and I hate to use this word, but stupid solicitors. Bless their hearts. They probably ain't stupid. They're just doing their job. But they can't have that get on their nerves. But you know somebody's there. So by faith, hello? Oh, that's dumb, Brother Jerry. Have you ever thought about it? You know. What is faith? Somebody tell me. I done told y'all four times. It ain't believing. It's knowing. I can believe pastor's a good man, but that don't mean I know he is, which I do. Just because I believe this is a good church, I need to know that it's a good church. You can tell me all day long, Robbie, how good it is. But until I experience it, then I know how to bullshit you. So, see, we're too busy looking. Now, I'll give you another one. This is silly, too, but God uses silly stuff. If somebody knocks on your door, are you going to sit there? No, you're going to get your wife to answer that door. Because most of the time, some people are sitting in the recliner with that thing in their hand. You going to get that? <laughs> when I was a kid, we didn't have no remotes. We had three channels, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And I, you're looking at a human remote because I had to sit in the floor when I wanted to play. And if I went to play in another room, Daddy said, Jerry, come here. And secretly I'd say, why can't you get it yourself? I said secretly. And I went in there and turned that stupid television. For years, I hated TV. Saturday morning, I loved it because Daddy was gone and I could watch what I want to and I could make my sister turn it. <laughs> but you know somebody's there when they knock. You say, oh, man. See, we got to understand this is a simple thing. Faith is so simple, but yet we choose to walk by sight. If you look at what happened today and you really look beyond God, what you see is fear 
and chaos, and God don't want us to be a part of that. I'm going to say that again. God doesn't want us to be a part of all of that chaos. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to tell you something. It may look like God ain't in control, but I know through faith, I know, I know that he's in control. I sat there today thinking to myself, you know prophecies coming to pass one right after the other, and some people can't see it, but I'm here to tell you we've got to walk by faith. Hallelujah. The Bible said that the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3 and 11. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 and 2. The just shall live by faith. Romans 1 and 17. We've got to walk by faith. Faith is not believing, but it's knowing. Hallelujah. Yeah, looks can be deceiving, all right. Sometimes I, I remember, let me, let me go over here. Now, you guys, how many here loves cars? Raise your hand, Randy, you like cars? If y'all quit talking, you'd hear me. <coughs> y'all know I love you. You're just messing with you. I remember when I was a teenager, I had a, me and a friend had this hot rod. Well, it was his, and I'd cruise around with him. Y'all remember, remember, anybody know what cruising is? Remember when we used to run around them old hot dog place, old hamburger joints? We had one in Jasper called Reese's, or called Freeze Cone. And boy, all the hot rods gather around there on Saturday night. And you can be a Christian still have a hot rod. Glory. Is that right, Jerry said? I have two of them. <coughs> and he had this 69 Chevelle, and I'm going, I ain't left my message. I don't chase rabbits. I'm not a hunter like that. And that 69 Chevelle was maroon. It was beautiful, man. That thing was 396, four speed. Man, that thing was something. Then he had another little 62 Nova come around, all painted. You know, had that uh, metal flake paint, and, and it would shine like different colors when the light would hit it. Some sharp cars come around that freeze cone. And here I am sitting there with my 53 Buick with the hood from here to the door, yonder. Plenty of room for everybody to sit on. You ever seen a 53 Buick Skylark? A big old car. But it was cool. It was aqua aqua blue. Sharp. You know, had them chrome fidget bobs right over the wind over the top of the windshield. You know, I call them rain gutters. Come from the factory. Yeah, visors. I'm sorry, you're the car man, visors. I still like gutters. And listen to me. And here come what was his name? Almost remembered his name. Anyway. A little old skinny fella, we are wiry, curly hair. Wasn't big as nothing. Wore cowboy boots three times bigger than his feet was, you know. And he had a 64 Chevrolet. No, 62. And it was rust bucket. A rust bucket. All the quarter panel down there was just rust. Every time that thing, it had a full race cam, 327. That sucker would sit there and it would vibrate with that full race cam and you could see rust falling off of it. And he had brand new tires, white letter tires, 60s on the back, 70s on the front. The car looked terrible. I mean, it looked like he just got it out of the junkyard, put new tires on a new motor in it, drove it off the junkyard. But looks are deceiving. We'd go up there to Leo Kid's store up on Curry Highway, and some of us get out there. I know preachers shouldn't have been out there. That's illegal. Hey, I'd just tell them when to go and when to stop. I'm just watching for traffic. <laughs> Oh, come on, act like y'all ain't never done nothing. Yeah, I did race every now and then in it. But he would pull up, brother, to that line that we'd, you know, I was always the line, me or somebody. You know, we hold them hands up. And when he would hit that thing, when he'd stomp that gas on that old 62 piece of junk, nobody could beat him. We would sucker these new guys in and come cruising around the freeze cone. Hey, of course, I didn't lay no money on it, but my buddy did. He said, I bet you that old 62 Chevrolet there, $100, it'll beat you. you got to be a kid. And you know how these guys with these fancy hot rods and, you know, that, y'all don't remember the slick hair. You know, Brill Cream, little dabble, do you? 
And, man, here we go. And he'll get them out there, and that old 62 rust bucket would blow their doors. I mean, he was making money right and left. And I thought to myself, boy, the looks can be. And the Lord reminded me of that in this sermon. See, we're always looking, always trying to look at something. But, honey, you better quit looking because looks can be deceiving. Hallelujah. That car didn't look like it was worth nothing. But it never was that I could remember ever beat. It didn't matter what it looked like. You see, the boy that drove it, he had a, oh, come on now. He knew what he had. Come on. You know what. What you got? You got faith. And faith ain't believing. It's snowing. My God, I feel like I'm going to die. Woo! Pastor, let me preach last night. I wouldn't be vented up. Just kidding. I'm getting ready to close. But he said, Ezekiel. Can these bones live? And Ezekiel disappointed me with his answer. I'm going to the faith thing now. Ezekiel, a man of God. You ever read Ezekiel? He saw some wild things. He saw, well, a lot of people try to say he saw UFOs, but I don't believe that. But he saw something with lights on it. God let him have visions. And then he gets him on the mountain and shows him the valley of dry bones, which you know it represented Israel and their departure from God and their spiritual death. <clears throat> but he said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Now, here's Ezekiel operating with what? By sight. There's a lot of bones down there. How? You know, there ain't no muscle on them. There ain't no ligaments on them or no leaders. There ain't no flesh on them. And then he disappoints me with his answer. Now, this is a man of God. He says, oh, Lord, thou knowest. What kind of answer is that? You know what the man of God should have said? Yes. I see bones. But I'm looking past the bone. I see people. Whoop, glory to God. How many of you would have stood on that mountain and when God said, can these bones live? Would you have said, thou knowest. But that's what you get for looking. That's what you get for walking by sight. Because he was testing Ezekiel. He said, do you think they can live? I really don't know. But then God said something profound. It may look dead. This is for somebody, three or four people. It may look dead, but don't go by what it looks like. For the Lord said, now speak to the bones. Whoop, shana baha. Speak to them. Somebody in this house needs to speak and quit looking and start speaking to your stuff and quit looking like it may look like it's dead. It may look like it ain't going to happen. It may look like it's not going to come to pass. But quit looking and start speaking. Hallelujah. And start letting your faith get triggered. He ought to have said, I know they can. But verse 4, he told him, he said, prophesy. And he began to speak. There, You know what Solomon talked about, the power of life and death in the tongue? Why don't we do that more often? It's because we're too busy looking. Thank you. Too busy looking. If we would look past them bones and see people, Okay, turn around, Pastor, and look straight that way. What do you see? Okay, Ezekiel, I'm disappointed. Thank you, Ezekiel. Thank you, Pastor. I was getting worried about you, Pastor. 
I thought we was going to have to get the oil, Pastor. Anoint thine eyes. <laughs> but what do you see? How many of us got lost children? What do you see, lost children? Whew. Well, that's kind of silly. No. Because every time I look at Chase, I can look at him and say, ain't going to happen. I ain't saying that. Every time I see Chase, I see a vision of something else. I see him praying. Woo-hoo-hoo. I see him preaching. <laughs> I see him in a praise and worship team playing music. He plays drums, bass, guitar, you name it, he plays it. I see him preaching and leading music. I see all that. Why? Because faith ain't believing. Faith is knowing. I know that God's going to save my household. Why? Because he promised me in the word that he would save our household. So I know. I know Jeremy's going to be saved. I know Stephanie's going to be saved. I know Herman Trotter, my daddy's going to be saved. Well, statistics say he's almost 84, so, the, you know, the probability of him being saved is slim. You know what? This old Cajun boy ain't never cared about statistics. All I care about is what I know and who I serve. Hallelujah. I don't go by what it looks like. Yeah, my daddy's sitting at the house right now in that recliner chewing his old nasty tobacco. But one day I see my daddy sitting on the pew with my mama and he's not chewing, but he's praising God. He's using his mouth to give God praise and glory. That's not believing. What am I shut up about? That's knowing. How awesome is it when you start walking by faith and you quit walking by sight and watch God do great things, watching things come together. Isn't that awesome? Man, when them life centers start going up, when that, when that youth rec center starts going up, When all these young people start crowding in here, when all these folks in here start doing all these ministries and all these jobs God's got for them, when this church is so full that you have to get here early to get a seat, and I'll tell you what I would do right now in faith, I'd just start sitting other places, getting used to it. Amen. You can confuse pastor all you want to, just get used to it. He'll find you after a while, but start preparing. Why do you think God spoke here several times and said, prepare? Why are you waiting till the, they start running in here? When you start, your car starts running bad, then you say, I should have done that a year ago. It's been running that way for a couple of years. Help you, Jesus. Most of the time, you don't wait till it gets that. You go get it checked out. Get it on the diagnostic machine. You know, you're supposed to change plugs in them every 50,000 miles. So somebody says, I don't know, I'm not a mechanic, y'all are. But, you know, you kind of get the hint when you're going down the road 60 mile an hour and it's going, you try to pass somebody, it goes, that's kind of a clue. How do you think God feels? When you're always looking at everything, and it's an old saying, you can't see for looking. My grandpa always told me one thing. You can't believe nothing you see and only half of what you hear. So if we would walk by faith, storms wouldn't slow us down. I'm going to say it again. If we walk by faith, storms, well, you don't know how bad money. It does not matter. I want you to get this. It does not matter the intensity of your storm. Woo! I, oh, it's coming out. But it ma- what matters is the intensity of your faith. T.D. Jakes ain't the only one God drops a nugget in. Intensity of your situation. 
It's not the problem. It's the intensity of our faith. You've got to walk. Keep walking. Walk. You know, there's a thing on Facebook, P-U-S-H, push until something happens or whatever that is. We need to walk till something happens. Walk until the storm either leaves or we just walk through it. <laughs> or we stand on the bow of our ship and say, peace be still. Whew. See, you know the disciples could have did that. But they was too busy throwing, they was too busy seeing. I said the apostles, the disciples had been <coughs> with Jesus long enough. They could have stood up and said, peace be still, but they were too busy looking. Too busy looking. And Jesus had to take over. Honey, can I tell you, there are times Jesus will do a lot of things for you. But there's times Jesus expects you to do a lot of things for him. And one of them is to walk by faith. Walk by faith. If you look at everything, you're going to fall. Mm. If you look at everything, you're going to run into the wall. Because you can't see for looking. But faith is not believing. It's knowing. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that ain't going to like that. But it's true. Because you've got to know. I know. Do you know you're a Christian? Do you know it? Really know it? Who told you? Nobody had to tell you. You know it. I hate it when these guys, you ever witness the people and they cop out on you? And they say, that's why they look for about 30 minutes and go, you say, are you saved? They go. I don't really know. Don't you want to just, but you can't. They know. You hear me? They know. They'll sit on a pew in a church and God's dealing with them. And they'll say, I don't know if I'm saved. Or not. You know. How do y'all know you are? It's by faith. Faith is knowing. Oh, my God, that was you, Lord. How do you know God's going to do all this stuff in this church? Because you got the faith to believe what he said. You know what he says is true. How do you know? Because the word is full of things that he said, and they've already happened. Some of you in this revival have had things happen in this revival that he said would. Some of you have had things happen before this revival came that God said would happen, and they did. Did you pray for revival? Well, how did you know it was going to come? Mm, I'm not being silly. I'm just telling you. It's simple. It's simple how to tap into the blessings of God. It's simple how to survive the storms. And it's by faith, not by sight. If, if I'd have saw the car that, that Robbie and Christy was in, Seemed like somebody showed me on, on a picture of it. I don't know for sure. But I wouldn't, if I went by sight, I'd have been looking for a cemetery where they was buried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'd have went by sight, I'd have had my wife's funeral th nearly 13 years ago. But we knew because you can't walk by sight. And you can't always go, you can't go by what people tell you either. So it's walking by faith. Praise God. Chris, come on up here. If we've ever had our faith tested, it's going to be tested now. Ministers, I want all the ministers to stand up. Come on. All the ministers, stand up. Now, you're going to have to walk by faith. 
more so than your church folks. Why? Because there will come a time you will be asked to marry a gay couple. Uh Uh-oh. There will be a time, and I'm just giving you some prophecy. There will be a time that if you don't, they will threaten you, your livelihood, jobs, position in the church. They'll even come against your church. There will be times you'll be tried by other things. But you can't go by what you see. You've got to walk by faith. When you start pastoring and start ministering, don't go by it. You have five people on Wednesday night, five on Sunday, ten on Sunday night. That ain't what you look at. But you preach to a full church. God, God, God. See, I walk by faith, and I don't say this boasting, man. I'm telling you, I walk by faith. I told some of you the other day, God called me to preach, not to count. Because he'll bring them in if I'll preach the gospel. Oh, hallelujah. If I'll keep singing and keep worshiping, he'll send me somebody to worship with me. Hallelujah. Though I may be sick in body, you say. Well, if you'll keep on believing, God will heal you. If you keep on knowing that God is the healer, hallelujah, and quit just trying to believe it and trying to take everybody else's word, just say, I know my Redeemer liveth, and I know that he's my healer. So what do you want to do tonight? We're, this is going to be the last night until the last of June, July. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to face some things between now and then. But it's up to you to keep the revival spirit burning, the fire. Oh, God will bring it down. Not unless he's got some vessels to put it in. Don't get your vessel and put it back in the cabinet. But you've got to walk by faith. You may be tried between now and then. And even if the revi- even later after the revival's over, you're still going to face your things. One thing about a growing church is growing pains. But what are you going to walk by? Faith. Not by this. Chris, I don't care what the doctors tell you. I don't care what anybody says. You can't go by what they show you. You can't go by what they tell you, but you walk by what you know. Because the same God to heal me has no respect for persons. The same God to heal my wife is no respect for persons. So what do you want to do tonight? Are you going to walk by faith, or are you going to keep walking by what you see? Here's what I want us to do. I want us to find somebody to join hands with. I want everybody in this house connected. Find you somebody to join hands with. And everybody stand, please, if you're able, if you're physically able. I want you to join hands and be connected. Come on over. Get with somebody. Get on over there and everybody be connected. I don't want, want no gap in the, in the power line. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to begin. I want you to begin to pray. Begin to pray for one another. Because you've always needed each other. But from this day forward, you're going to need each other more than you ever have. And even when some of you are gone and doing your own ministries, this church still is going to be praying for you and you're going to be praying for them. We still need each other. When I'm long gone, And I'm somewhere else one of these days. I still need you and you need me. So pray for each other right now that you don't walk by sight. Don't let things distract you, but walk by faith. And remember, faith is not believing, it's knowing. Right now, I want you to begin to pray earnestly for one another, in accessory prayer for one another, that God will strengthen, God will bless, God will lift up.
While you're praying, pray for me and Benita for these next three and a half weeks. God will move and God will prepare us for what's ahead in the ministry. God will prepare us for the remainder of this revival, however long it goes, and then God will prepare us for beyond that point because it's going to get harder and harder to preach the gospel and preach the truth. But I'm not looking at that. <laughs> I'm walking by faith. Well, I know who I am, and I know whose I am. And I know who called me. And if I have to go back to preaching the pine tree, so be it. Glory. Father, we pray right now. Father, we trust you with faith because we know, God, that faith is not believing, it's knowing. And God, right now, we know what's going to happen, Lord, in this house. We know that you're going to bless. We know that you're going to send more people. We know that you're going to send a, a greater move of your power and your presence and your spirit in this church. We know, God, that it's going to be a light in this community. God, we know that it's going to be a church without walls. We know there's going to be deliverance in this house. We know there's going to be salvation in this house. God, we know that we know that we know. Hallelujah. Now raise your hands and begin to praise God that you know. Hallelujah. That you know. If you've got a situation in your life, speak to it right now. You know it's going to be resolved. You know that God's going to heal you. You know that God's going to save. You know that God's going to move in your life. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. If anybody needs prayer, come before I turn it over to Brother Price. If you need prayer. God, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, Pastor. Come on, all you ministers, come on. It's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am not aware of these afflictions, eclipse by glory.
and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes and grace is an ocean we're all sinking so heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss my heart turns violently inside of my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about
I just want to say, don't, remember I told you the other day, last week, when we had that break, that's, that's prime time when the enemy's going to start working on you. And me and Benita too. But I know that I know. And I don't believe y'all going to be the same when I get back. I don't believe he's going to be the same. I don't believe I'm going to be the same. Why? Because I know that the next level is already started. So get ready to watch God do something now, then, and right on till the rapture of the church. I just want to say thank you for these nine weeks that you've loved me and my wife, that you've blessed us with your giving, you've blessed us with food, you've took me out to eat. I've had a lot of good things happen to us in our ministry, but this has got to be one of some of the best people I've ever had the privilege of preaching to. And one of the best pastors. I've never had a pastor where I failed a bond that we work together in a revival like we have. And it's no egos, it's no big eyes, or no little U's. It's just working in the kingdom. So you know Benita and I love y'all. And I ain't going to cry. I'm trying not to. Here. Come on, give the Lord praise tonight. Do you know that you know that you know that you know? You have to know. Amen. You just have to know. I wish I had words tonight to explain what I felt when the Lord was giving messages and interpretations up here on this platform. I wish I had words to tell you that it's going to take that knowing faith through the hard times and the troublesome times. Don't lose your focus on God. Don't lose your focus who you are in God. Don't lose your focus on your faith. Amen? Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. But thank God for faith. We're going on a fast, not this coming week, because I'm going to be in Texas. I want to eat some of that Texas beef. Medium rare, medium well. Is it? Amen. Brother Trotter's going to wait till after his reunion to go on a fast. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Thank you all tonight, Brother Chris. Brother, thank you so much. Thank you, sister, for being here to help us with this. We appreciate y'all tonight so much. But I'm going to tell you, you won't know who we are in a month. You're not going to know who we are in a month. Because we're going to add to, we're going to add to what God's already done to us, for us, in us, through us. And around us. Amen. I wonder how many lives have been changed in nine weeks. Do you know nine weeks is just a little over two months? Your life has changed in battles. Your life has changed in victories. Your life has just changed. I wonder how many lives were changed in nine weeks of revival. We're going to be in camp meeting. July the 20th through the 24th, Bishop Wilburn Kirkland's going to be ministering Monday night and Tuesday night, the 20th and 21st that night here. We're looking forward to him being here again this year. I'm going to tell you, we had an awesome move of God here for two years in a row. We're looking for it again. Amen. Then Brother Ricky Chrysler is going to be with us on that Wednesday night on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Brother Danny Burns, a pastor in the Panhandle of Florida. He's going to be with us that Thursday night and Friday night. The Lord's going to preach to (laughs) y'all. I'm going to sit behind the preachers. He's going to preach to (laughs) y'all. Amen. He don't preach to me when I'm back here, does he? If if you're under the sound of the word, you've been preached to. So we're looking forward to to, uh, camp meeting coming up and 
Looking forward to getting back in revival again. Please, I want you to please pray for Sister B. She's at home. She's weak. She needs your prayer. Sister Ruby Holly has went to Prattville for two weeks with uh, her daughter. Please continue to pray for her. She just bawled and cried today because she couldn't be able to be in church. Please pray for them. Sister Lucille's sister is uh, in the hospital. Please pray for her and that family. They're in desperate need of prayer. Would you pray for them? If you don't know their names, that's all right. God knows who they are. Pray for them. Amen. We're going to have some refreshments in the fellowship hall. If you ladies have to get something going or get it heated or whatever, uh, we're honoring Brother Trotter tonight. We're uh, giving him tribute just to spend a little time with him and love on him and let him know we really appreciate him for preaching to us and, and sort of sacrificing for nine weeks to be here in revival and preaching God's word and ministering and, and uh, sacrificing his time that he could be at home with his family. We just want to honor him tonight. It's just finger food. Uh, they didn't get any of my fingers, thank God. Uh, they may have some of y'all's, but but uh, we want you to, we, we, <laughs> long as, Brother Charles said, as long as it's got hot sauce on it, it's all right. <laughs> but we want everybody, please, we want everybody to come to the back and we want you to just uh, sit down and enjoy uh, finger foods and all with us tonight. Amen. Let's pray before we go back there. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for such a move of God through the words of the Lord. And God, we pray that you touch every individual here, God, that you would draw us closer to your heartbeat daily in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask you to bless this food. Let it be fruitful and multiply and replenish it. In Jesus' name, bless the hands that's prepared it. God, let it nourish our body to serve you. And Lord, when our work on earth is done, save us all in heaven without the loss of a soul. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen.